in this video we're going to basically look at the acceptable Lewis structure the desired Lewis structure of sulfur dioxide okay so we'll basically see that there are basically two uh, Lewis structures that you can form of sulfur dioxide but we'll basically get to look at the acceptable one and why is it so okay so we all know that sulfur is in group six so is oxygen so they all have six electrons in the outermost shell okay so now oxygen multiplied by two so in total the number of valence electrons we have in this case because from risk theory we know valence electrons are the ones that take part in bond formation so six by two is 12 plus six that is 18 so we have 18 valence electrons we'll have to distribute them okay so there is one method that I basically use when it comes to the aspect of coming up with a Lewis structure. Okay, when it comes to atoms or basically elements that do not exceed the octet. Of course, we'll try and apply it. So the main idea behind it is get to look at the number of missing electrons. So for sulfur, we know that for it to meet octet, it is in need of how many electrons? Two electrons. Oxygen as well is in need of two. Now we've got two oxygen atoms, so we'll need a total of four electrons. So if you add the four plus the two, you realize that you have six electrons that are needed. So these six electrons can be pressed by the bonds. So I divide by two because each bond carries two electrons. So three bonds are required. So that's the method that we basically use when it comes to coming up with a Lewis structure. All right. Now, what we basically understand is, in this case, sulfur is going to be the central atom in that it is the least electronegative atom. So therefore, I'm going to put sulfur. And then we've got two oxygen atoms. So since we've got three bonds, one is expected to take how many? One is expected to take two. Then the other one will take a single bond. So I'll use a different color there. So one will take two bonds. Then the other one will take a single bond. So there you have oxygen, there you have oxygen. So we need to balance the oxygen atom. So where we've got two bonds, we've got four electrons. So there is need of four more electrons. So I'll put the four electrons there. And then where there's a single bond, there are two. So we need of six. And then let's try to determine how many we've used so far. So remember on the bonds, we've got four there. Here we've got two. And then on this oxygen, you've got four. There you've got six. So in total, we have 16 electrons. How many are remaining? Out of 18, we're remaining with two. So the two will be on the central atom sulfur. And that's why, it is, that's why it's bending down ones like that. So that's one Lewis structure that you can look at. Then the other one, basically, we can decide to come up with sulfur like that, just a normal way. And then just put... We'll try to balance it up by putting two bonds on each end. So, of course, they're also going to bend. You realize, you, you basically get to understand why. So, like that. So, in that case, and then we'll try to balance up the electrons as well. So, oxygens have got four because of the bonds, two bonds, each four, four. So, there is need of four more. Four 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 okay so that's what we are trying to see there now if you look at this this time around if you look at it so here you've got four electrons four electrons on the bonds and then you've got four lone pair electrons on each oxygen atom so if you get to add them you've got eight eight so eight eight gives you 16 again how many are remaining you're remaining with two so there will be two electrons on the central atom, and that's why it's also bending downwards. So this is the way this other Lewis structure is. So now you realize that knowing that the bonds are having four electrons on each side of sulfur, plus the two that are, that are on the central atom. So that makes it to have more than eight electrons, making it ten electrons. So it has exceeded the octet. So sulfur is able to exceed the octet. Now, 
Well, basically, let's try to now see the, the acceptable between the two. Which one is more desirable and why? Okay, so that brings us to an idea of what we call the formal charges. Okay, so we need to understand what a formal charge is. So a formal charge is calculated as a difference between valence electrons. And then, of course, you can subtract the number of lone pairs and also the number of bonds. So in summary, I just say everything around, subtract everything around. Lone pair electrons as well as the bonds. That's simple and straightforward, right? So therefore, we'll look at the first structure there. The first structure, we'll look at sulfur. Sulfur has got how many valence electrons? Six. So a bit about this structure is both sulfur and oxygen have got six valence electrons. So we'll just be subtracting. So for first sulfur A, if you try to look at it, how many things are around it? So we have two bonds there, plus one bond there, plus the two lone pair electrons. So two, three, five. So it has got a positive charge. And then if we go to the oxygen atom with... Uh, with four lone pairs. So one, two, three, four lone pairs plus the two bonds. This oxygen here. So four plus two, it will give you six. So it has got a zero formal charge. And then the one which is having six lone pairs plus the one bond. So it will be seven. Six minus seven is a minus. Okay. And then if you go to the other side. The sulfur on the midway has got how many things around it? It's got two bonds on each side, making it four. And then plus the two lone pair electrons, it makes it six. Six minus six it is a charge of a zero. And then the oxygen has got four lone pairs each with two bonds, making it six. So six minus six is zero. So you've seen that the other structures got zeros, formal charges. So now, the basic important rule is this. When it comes to formal charges, a compound or a Lewis structure with fewest charges and the one that puts a negative charge on the most electronegative is most stable. Okay. So basically in this case, the first option is the fewest charges. So the one on the right hand side has got no charges. So it makes it more desirable, more stable than the first one. First one's got a positive and a negative and all that. So this one is the more desired and acceptable structure of sulfur dioxide as a Lewis structure. Okay, so that's it for this video. You can check out the other video about Lewis structures for more interesting things.